All right, guys. So um, today we're going to talk about listings, um, listing opportunities, and we'll dive a little bit into the listing presentation as well. Kind of some of the key points. Um, the big thing, guys, is is listings do take some time to master, right? If you're if you've only been working with buyers and you've never worked with listings, it's just a different side of the of the process. It's a different animal. There's a different mindset going into it. There's a different level of skill set I think you need to have to be an effective listing agent because you're you're coming from a different perspective. Whereas with the buyer, it's more about assessing their wants, their needs, and holding their hand and stuff like that, and kind of walking them through it and showing them property and stuff like that. With the listing, it's a lot more project management, um, managing certain tasks to get the house ready for the market. It's negotiating your commission. It's negotiating on behalf of the seller to get them the best price and terms. Um, so there's just, just different things you got to bring to the table to be an effective listing agent. I would say um, with listings, you also have to be more of a leader. You have to be a little bit more aggressive, right? You don't have to be crazy aggressive, but you have to also be able to, you know, inform the client and give them some like, solid information on what they need to do. So you have to lead them through the transaction just in a different way that you would lead someone through a buyer transaction. Um, so let's first talk about where do you get listings from? Like, what are the different ways you can get listings? I want to open that up or if you guys want to write it in the chat, where do you get listings from? How can you generate listing opportunities? What you got, Maori? One thing I do want to try, just, I mean, we've been talking about this for a while and I'm actually going to start trying to do this. Um, I mean, we spoke you on everything, but all these expired, all the canceled, like I, I know, I mean, I, I have an idea of why, right? And it's like a lot of these agents are saying, oh, we're going to get your top dollar in this market. It's crazy, but they're not really aware of the shift. So now they overpromised, couldn't deliver, pissed off the sellers and i feel like that's a reason why we're getting a lot of expireds not expires but canceled so just going back to them and just kind of doing what you say right why do you think your house didn't sell and just i mean that's one thing i've never done it but i think right now is a good time to try and just kind of cold call those yeah definitely so that would be like calling expires calling um canceled even calling fizzboats right? People who are trying to sell it on their own, they're not able to sell. So let's break those two up into like, I'm going to pull up a, a little note section so we can write some thoughts down. Um, Cause I think it's important if you guys kind of get a visual on this. Give me one quick sec. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Okay. So I want to categorize like how to get listings into two categories. One of them is like outbound, like stuff you're intentionally going after. And then the other stuff is going to be more like attraction based or inbound. Right, and there's gonna be some pros and cons to both of those. So um, with outbound stuff, that would be all like your prospecting, right? Like you going out there and trying to see if someone wants to sell their house, right? So that would include, um, you know, calling, right? Door knocking. And what you call in door knock, you know, that can be, Cancels, expires, fizzbos. Which guys, I mean, this stuff works, right? Like if you pick up the phone and just call people and call cancels and call expires and call for sale by owners, you know, if you're able to connect with someone and build some rapport, like you can generate a listing opportunity. Um, 
I did, I used to do a lot of this when, when I was heavier in production and I've done both. I've called and I've door knocked. And I've gotten listings from both of them. I remember this one scenario where we were in the office and for a little while, Zillow had um, like a for sale by owner section and they had a Zillow make me move section where you could just go onto Zillow's website and you can search for sellers who put their property as a Zillow make me move. And basically what they would say is, hey, if you give me this price, I'd be open to selling. So it's a, it was a service on the site where a seller can go on there, put their information up and it would give you their, um, their contact info. And then you basically call them. It was kind of like a FISBO, but um, almost like calling a FISBO, right? Someone looking to sell, but it was a little like less formal. They were just kind of throwing it out there. Like they put a price of a million and then just kind of see what happens. But I remember calling a guy on there. Um, I called him in the morning. He put his property either on FISBO or make me move. And what I ended up finding now is by talking to him is that he needed to sell his house and he had it listed with another agent. They didn't sell it. They couldn't sell for the price he wanted. Um, I kind of went through some of the dialogue of like, hey, what did the last agent do? Would you like to know why it didn't sell? Would it be helpful if I, you know, showed you different strategies on how you can get more money and stuff like that. And he said, yes. Yeah. So I set the appointment uh, for that afternoon. I literally called him in the morning around nine or 10. And I set the appointment for the afternoon around one or two. I came by around one or two, did the whole entire presentation. And by the end of that appointment, he was ready to sign a listing. It was literally like in that day, he didn't end up signing the listing until the next morning, I think, um, because he wanted to sleep on it and talk well, to his mom or something. But moral of the story, guys, is there are people out there who are truly motivated to sell. You just got to call them and connect with them. All right. There's also FISBOs that I've called who cussed me out. There's also FISBOs that I've called or cancels expired who wasted my time or were completely unrealistic. Uh, or I went out and met with them and nothing happened. Right. So what I'm trying to get at, guys, is that it's really going to be a numbers game and you got to kind of figure out what you're attracted to. Like if you're someone who likes to be in that battle of calling and like trying to book appointments and stuff like that and like the, the cold calling stuff and you get a thrill out of that and it's something you can do consistently, then you can definitely cut your teeth on that and, and pull some appointments. Um, but what I can tell you guys is you have to be aggressive. When you're calling cancels, expired, you have to be quick. There's the art of being able to just break the ice real quick with someone. You got to already know that they're getting called by a bunch of different people. Um, and a lot of times when you reach them, they've already been called by 5, 10, 20 realtors. So sometimes they're pissed off, right? So you're dealing with someone who may want to sell, but the circumstances, you know, there's some irritation with that client. Right. So show of hands, like who likes that type of battle? Who likes like hunting and prospecting like that? And I could jump on the phones and spend an hour, two hours a day, just like balloting it out with FISBOs, cancels, expires. Raise your hand if like that's something you can do. I like it. I mean, that, it's just my personality, I guess. I like doing that. Um, and here's the thing. It's the cheapest way to get listings right? Because it doesn't cost anything other than your time, right? You just got to pick the phone up and dial for dollars. That's basically what it is. And if you do that every day, um, you'll get good, you know? So any questions, Enrique, guys? Enrique, really yeah. quick. I know, I know Robert's not on this call right now, but mm -hmm. I had a one-on-one -on -one with Robert earlier today. And that's what he's doing for the last two weeks. He's dialing out two to three hours a day. He, he told me he went, what he calls them, he went on 11 uh, like previews to look at property. And then he went on five actual listing appointments. And he's thinking that he's probably going to be able to sign one tomorrow. Um, so again, guys, it's like what Enrique is saying. I think, you know, the biggest thing is being consistent. I know we kind of repeat ourselves and say that quite often. But again, you can make a living, you can be a successful real estate agent by doing any one of those things we put in the chat. You know, if you wanted to call expired, call FISBOs, door knock. I think the big takeaway is just being consistent. But I like the way Enrique fr framed it was like, how, what do you see yourself doing? 
What do you see yourself committing to? What do you see yourself doing at a, at a high level on a daily basis, right? I think that's a great question, Enrique, because then you can gear your marketing towards that. Yeah. And you can get good, right? Like it, I wouldn't recommend doing all of it. I would recommend even picking the one or two that you're going to go at a high level and even starting off with one and then adding to that, right? Um, yeah, Robert's calling expires and FISBOs and cancels, right? Because now here's the other thing too, is like because of the way the market is changing, there are expires and FISBOs to call. There wasn't any a year or two ago, right? So also the market conditions uh, are going to dictate what's available as well, right? Right now, you're going to see more cancels, more expireds come up than you've seen in a long time, be just because of the shift in the market and the prices and the interest rates. So it would be advantageous for you to say, hey, maybe that's not my favorite thing to do, but I need to keep the listings coming in and I need to keep the opportunity coming in. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start implementing that while I know the season is hot, right? Um, something you got to think about, right? And, and Enrique, just to kind of add on that, guys, you can do, I mean, I, I, again, we're saying go deep into it, but imagine this concept is that, you know, if you wanted to prospect in the morning for the FISBOs, for the expired, for the cancels, but then you're still getting the incoming Zillow Flex opportunity, right? Yeah. It's not that you have to pick one or the other on, in that scenario until you get overwhelmed, obviously. But to me, as a, as a real estate agent, as a salesperson, that's the opportunity I look at. Like, okay, I know I'm going to be getting these opportunities sent to me. I know I got to nurture these opportunities. Now, when I don't have those opportunities, I'm going to find out another way to market myself if I want to go ahead and go after listings, right? Which I can plug in some of my buyers. Yeah. And they're all hard. I mean, here, here's the other thing too, to keep in mind. To have li uh, like leads coming to you, there's a cost to that, right? Whether it's Zillow Flex, whether you're doing some sort of marketing campaign and you're paying marketing dollars every single month, there's a cost to that. So you got to think like, would you rather pay a cost and have leads come in? Or would you rather put a little more sweat equity and be able to keep more of your money, right? Because you call in expires and FISBOs, it takes more time, but you're not paying a huge cost. You're not paying a referral fee to Zillow or anything like that, right? So they're both hard, right? Um, or you're like, hey, you know what? I don't mind paying you know, Zillow, or I don't mind paying, you know, some marketing dollars because I have money to invest, or I don't mind taking a hit on the Zillow flex, but I don't have to worry about hunting. My phone is ringing all the time. Right. And I'm going to just, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to maximize every opportunity that comes in. Right. Because I know that's the strategy that I'm doing. So there's no right or wrong. It's a matter of you understanding what you're getting yourself into. And then you picking the strategy that makes the most sense for your business and, and your lifestyle. Right. Um, okay. So back to my document here. Um, so the pros of this, right. Very little cost, right. The cons, um, time, energy, sweat equity, right? That's basically what it is, right? You're in the battle. Very little cost, uh, more profit, right? That's pretty much it is, right? Like if you want to go door knock, like if you want to say you want to start a farm and you want to go door knock your neighborhood or whatever it might be, it's still the same type of deal, right? You're still going to go door knock people. You're still going to get people that slam the door on your face, you know, you may talk to some nice people, but also when you door knock, it's also a colder type of lead, right? Because if you're just door knocking a neighborhood, it's not like someone raised their hand and said, hey, I'm looking to sell. You're just like banking on, it's a numbers game, right? If I talk to a hundred people, there may be one person that says I'm looking to make a move, right? With uh, cancels, expires, FISBOs, these people already expressed interest in selling their home. Right. And now you're having the battle, all the other agents calling. Um, any questions, guys, on the expired FISBOs door knocking? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to the inbound opportunities, right? Or the attraction based. So, inbound opportunities, 
This is gonna be online leads, right? Wherever it's from, whether it's, you know, Zillow, uh, Redfin, Homelight, whatever it might be, right? Any online lead source, right? You can get opportunities from those. Um, some of your buyers, right? Buyers have a property to sell or they turn into sellers eventually, right? You have someone buy three, four, five years ago. They want to sell. Blanca, you got, um, you got a text the other day from your client. Remember you invited them to your um, yes. day at the park? Yes. What did they say? I did. So um, I sent everybody the invitation and he said, Blanca, what a coincidence. I was just going to reach out. We're thinking of selling our place. And when did you help them buy? Uh, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. Do you remember where that lead came from? Was it? Um, let me remember. I'll tell you right now. Like a Zillow lead or something, or maybe a referral it, from another client? Um, Redfin. Redfin. Okay. So look at that. Blanca got a Redfin lead, helped that client. Redfin got a referral fee. And then two and a half years later, they want to sell that property. And are they trying to sell to buy another one? No, it's actually a divorce situation. Okay. Yeah. So divorce situation. I'm sure someone in that divorce is going to want to buy something eventually, right? So, yes. Uh, but as you see, guys, things happen, right? Life events happen. Things happen. There's reasons people want to sell all the time. Your buyers may become sellers at one point, or they may currently have a property they need to sell in order to buy. I'm going to have a guess at the end. Got to mute. Uh, make sure you guys are muted, guys, if you're not um, being called on right now. Okay. Um, so your buyers, right? What's some other inbound opportunities? How about referrals, right? Referrals from your SOI, right? Or past clients. I know like the couple listings that I'm working on right now, um, they're referrals from a family member, right? They have two properties to sell. It's an inheritance trust situation. Um, and it's just SOI business, SOI business that was referred to me. Um, and a lot of our listings that we've gotten have come from SOI and from referrals, right? Because it's usually like you've built up credibility with these people over time because you've been in the business, you've stayed in front of them, you've touched base with them, you've invited them to your events, you're, you post on social media, they see you, you know, you keep in touch. And then they're thinking of selling so rather than them saying, go, hey, I'm going to go look for a realtor or interview a bunch of realtors, they already know like, oh, Enrique or Blanca or Jason or whoever, that's, that's the person I, I go to when I have a question, right? So referrals, I mean, that should always be a staple in your business, right? And that's something where by you just nurturing those relationships, you're going to get business that comes off of that and that can turn into listings, right? And the great thing about referrals is that a lot of times if they had the confidence to call you and hit you up for the business, they're not usually shopping you around. Sometimes they are right. There can be sometimes, but a lot of times, majority of the time, it's like they already trust you, which is why they called you in the first place. Right. So they're going to try to trust what you say when you recommend things, when you talk about commissions and stuff like that, the trust and the credibility is already built there because you've nurtured that relationship and you've established credibility over time, right? So those of you guys that are newer in the business, your job is number one, to understand that you need to build relationships over time, right? Like the longer you're in the business, the more deals you close, the more referrals you set yourself up to get. As long as you are doing a good job, as long as you are staying in front of people, as long as you are providing value, as long as you are carrying yourself well, like what are, what's the perception they have of you? Do they see you as the professional? Um, the more and more people you're able to add to your database and to your past client list, um, 
the more organic referrals that will come off over time, right? Like I know in the beginning of my career, I wasn't getting a lot of referrals, but now being almost 20 years in the game, like I get referrals all the time. I get referrals from friends, from family, just because they know I've been in the business. In fact, like today, I posted on, I posted yesterday uh, a picture of a property that was discounted. I don't know if anybody saw my story. I thought it was funny because the property was called like Pipe Dream Court. <laughs> and I just put, hey, it used to be a pipe dream to buy a house. Now it's not, now it's a reality, right? There's over, there's a bunch of houses that are discounted. I have a list of discounted properties. One of my friends from high school, right? I graduated 20 years ago. Um, he just hit me up. Hey, long time since high school. When we last talked, hope is all as well. Saw your story. Want to see if I can check out that list of discounted properties, right? So this is someone from like back in the day. And then he just, I asked him like, you know, I kind of responded to him, asked him a couple of questions. And then now um, he's giving me some info on what their criteria is. They're looking to buy something 1.5 to 1.7, right? And that's just basically a SOI. This guy, I haven't talked to this guy in years, right? But he follows me and he sees me posting all the time, right? All the time, all the time. So bam, an opportunity came up. Um, they want to do a 1031 exchange. So they need to sell. It looks like they need to sell to buy. So I don't know. Can you help with that? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, what other inbound opportunities are there? Um, farming. Farming is another one. Right? Farming is something where you're sending out flyers, marketing material to a specific neighborhood or to a specific group of people. Farming always, doesn't always have to be a neighborhood. You can farm your past clients, right? It just basically means you're sending consistent marketing material to your past clients. Um, so let's say like you want to farm your neighborhood that you live in, or you want to farm a certain neighborhood because of the price points or the area or that's where you want to start establishing some, you know, consistent business in, you would pick that farm, you would come up with your budget, um, you would come up with the game plan of how you're going to market to them, and which is usually going to be a combination of like just listed, just sold, market updates, just basically kind of showcasing the market and showcasing what you do. And you're hoping that by you sending consistent marketing material, someone's going to respond and hit you up and say, hey, I'm looking to sell. It works. It definitely works, um, but it's, it's expensive. That's, that's the main thing, right? Like that's where if you have money and you wanna invest into something, you, you can do it and it does work. And I know people who are doing it at a high level, but they're spending a lot of money because just like any mail, um, I'm sure all of you guys get mail that you just toss right in the garbage, right? Something comes to your mailbox, you look at it, you toss it right in the garbage. It probably doesn't even make it into your house. It's the same thing with farming, right? It's something where it's a, it's a numbers game. You got to be sending out thousands and thousands of pieces every single month. And there might be someone who responds, right? Um, so it's just a matter of, do you want to invest into your business? Do you have the money to do that? And the biggest thing is, can you do it consistently? Can you, right? Is that going to be a staple in your business? I would not start a farm if you don't have like the budget to keep that going forever. You're going to waste money. Um, and, and again, guys, I mean, going back to that farm, Enrique, this is something that we've been taught in regards to farming. I know Enrique used the word forever. It's, that was the mindset that the person that was teaching this farming session went into it with. It's not just six months, not just a year. It is going to it with the mindset of I'm doing this forever. Right. Yeah. And again, and again, I think if, if you're if you're going into it, that mindset, and you understand that. And then I think on top of that, Enrique, we got to talk about after you farm, you're going to get those opportunities. And how are you going to handle those opportunities? How are you going to be able to track and uh, follow up and go ahead and communicate with the, with those leads that actually come in? Right. Yeah. So, again, I think, um, again, I de definitely farming does work. Uh, and, and I guess, you know, I think you said what next week or no, we're going to do some MailChimp next week. 
but if, if people are, are interested in farming, we do have coaches and we have uh, systems that, that you guys can tap into to, to kind of interview to see if it makes sense for you. Yeah, I have a whole farming program that I purchased from Daniel Beer years ago, which I spent like a thousand bucks on. And it's his whole entire farming course. And it's really detailed. And he breaks it down. And I started it and I stopped about halfway because I realized halfway that I wasn't able to commit to it. I spent a thousand dollars on the course, right? And I started watching it and, it and it wasn't complicated, but I realized like if I wasn't going to go big or go all in on that, I didn't want to start it. I was like, can I take that same energy and maybe that money that I would invest and just in, reinvest that into what we're already doing that's already working, right? Or just go deeper or, right? So the, the big challenge guys, or the, the big thing is you don't want to add stuff to your plate if you're not even doing the stuff that you have in front of you at a high level, right? Because then you start chasing too many rabbits. You start chasing too many, too many things and you don't end up doing none of them at a deep level. Uh, and what we have learned through coaching uh, and being exposed to people who have like massive businesses, they pick like a couple and then they go really hard and they do like they master those things before they add anything. They add stuff once the, the two that they have are already like rocking and rolling and booming and spitting out consistent um, deals and stuff like that. Um, and some of them don't even ever add anything to their plate. They're like, nope, this is what we do. I do this and I do this. I do online leads and I like work the shit out of my SOI. That's what I do. And that's kind of the approach that we've taken, right? Where we do online leads and we just work our SOI through social media, through events, through calling them, through staying in touch, through being present at barbecues and family events and all that stuff. Like that has been our strategy and but does that mean that we can't add like another pillar now um, and say, okay, we're going to add this third pillar and then we're going to start doing this really, really hard, right? Like go hard on this one. Um, but I'd be very, very cautious to add something that you are not going to commit to um, as a staple in your business. And that's the big thing is, is this is the elevated conversation, right? Like this is, this is meant for people who want to go to a, another level is you need to pick your path at the end of the day. You need to pick your path right? There's a lot of ways to do this. Um, and you need to figure out what stuff you like doing, what stuff you're going to do consistently, what stuff you get a joy out of doing, what stuff you can scale, what stuff you can go deep in, what stuff you want to perfect, you want to master and pick your lane and stay in your lane. Because that's the biggest mistake that a lot of people make. And we've made that mistake early on where we're just trying too many things. We're trying too many things and we weren't doing any of them at a high level. And in the end, we wasted a shit ton of money, a shit ton of time where if we would have just stuck with those two for that whole time, we would have like been a lot further with those two. Right. Um, so it, it's not to say yes or no or right or wrong. It's to really say like pick, pick what you're going to dominate and just dominate that shit. That's, that's what it is. Cause they all work guys. They all work. If you work, if you work them, if you work them hard and you're consistent, they work. Um, any questions on this stuff so far? And this is all right now what we're mainly focusing on. This is all about where to get leads from for listings, right? So you can farm. Um, so let's go pros and cons, right? So pros is, um, You can scale, right? You have leads coming in, right? If you do it the right way, um, maybe more consistency in your business. Of consistency of lead flow. The cons are gonna be, there's gonna be a cost, right? There's a cost, Let's check equity. And then you still must have a system in place, right? So you still must have a system in place to convert. So for example, let's say like you started a farm and you're spending 5,000 bucks a month and you're starting to get leads to come in. 
you still need to have a system like on how you handle every single lead, right? Who's calling that lead? How many times are you calling them? What do you do when that person says, yeah, I just want to know what my house is worth. I'm thinking of selling next year, you know? Um, how do you stay top of mind with that person, right? Like all the same things that we talk about, like how we work our internet leads. It's the same exact thing. There still has to be a system that you work and you, so that you move these people through the funnel, right? Um, all those things that we listed, those are mainly just how to get leads to the table. Once they're at the table, then you got to have that system and that follow through and that consistency to work them to the finish line. Um, so none of that changes. I think sometimes we're in the mindset of like, this one's better than the other. They're not, right? They're just different. Yeah, yeah. You, have to lead. you still got to work. A lead's a lead, right? So I want everyone to say that with me. Just repeat that real quick. A lead is a lead. A lead is a lead, right? There are no special leads, guys. And in fact, the best lead you can get, what's the best lead you can get? Referral. SOI. SOI. SOI referral. That's the best. That's the highest quality lead you can get is when you helped someone out already and they were happy with you and they referred you to another person and said, hey, you've got to go with, with Mauricio. You've got to go with Zahara. Like she just helped me buy my house. She's awesome. Like I hands down recommend her. I'm going to put you in touch with Zahara. That's the best lead you can get because half the work is already done, right? Like the client has already been identified if they want to buy or sell. And the credibility oftentimes has already been established because if, if that client is willing to listen to the other person and take the recommendation, that means there's some credibility there and it's already been proven that you do a good job, right? That's the best, warmest, best lead that you can ever get, right? So, regardless of whatever other opportunities you're looking to get leads from, remember your highest and best quality source is your SOI, your friends, your family, people who know, like, and trust you, which is where you should put all your emphasis into nurturing those relationships and working those people, right? Because um, every other lead is a cold lead. Even if you do a farm or even if you do an online lead gen campaign or even if you prospect and call FISBOs or whatever, at the end of the day, it's a cold lead that you're trying to turn warm, right? It's someone that doesn't know you and now you're trying to warm them up, right? So the battle, there's a, there's a lot more of an uphill battle with that, you know, trying to get that opportunity. Uh, all right. For the last 15 minutes or so, um, I want to dive into the process of the listing and kind of the listing presentation as well. Um, just some kind of key pointers. Um, And remember guys, like we can spend hours and hours and hours talking about listings, right? So this is really gonna be an overview, but at least to help you get a better understanding of, of where it's at, right? For some of you guys, you guys have done listings already. Some of you guys haven't, um, and you wanna start dabbling in and getting some listings to your pipeline. But what you gotta understand, first of all, is maybe some key pointers on having a successful listing. Um, number one is you have to have a motivated seller right like if you cannot convince someone that they need to sell their home that's the thing you have to have a motivated seller and there has to be a legit reason on why they want to sell right so in the chat guys what are some legitimate reasons on why people want to sell their home like what's a legit reason why someone should someone should sell Put some stuff in the chat. Major life event, divorce, death, job transfer, downgrade, moving out of the area, upgrade. Uh, there could be like bankruptcy. They want to buy another property we can't afford unless they sell. Yeah, so they need, a, they need a sell to buy. Distress. Yeah, maybe distress. They lost their job. They can't afford the payments anymore. 
some sort of distress. How about like the market's hot right now and I can make a lot of money? Is that a legit reason? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. If, if they have a realistic idea of what they want. You guys think that's a legit reason? Like prices are high right now. It's a good time to sell. Definitely. I, I think, I think Enrique, I think you'd have to peel the onion back on that, that right? To figure out like, what are they going to do their next step? Right. I think that is, yeah, it is a good time to sell. You can get, you know, top dollar still for your house, but what is the next step? Right. Is that going to, you getting this amount, is that going to lead you to your next step? Yeah. So just strictly, it's a good time to sell because the market's hot and the prices are high. I don't think that's a good reason for someone to sell. Right. There has to be something that goes along with that. To, to make their plan a solid plan. Like, hey, the market's, it's a good time to sell. So I'm gonna sell and then I'm gonna take that money and I'm gonna do this with that money, right? I'm gonna either buy like two more properties, right? I'm gonna cash out this one, buy two more or I'm gonna move somewhere else or I'm gonna take that money and invest some money into something else, another investment. There has to be a second step plan, right? So if anybody, if you ever meet a seller and they wanna sell strictly because it's a hot market, I would be very, very cautious and I would make sure I ask a bunch of questions on who, what, when, where, why, what's going to happen after that? What are you going to do with the money? What does it mean to get that money? If you don't sell for that price that you're thinking, then what do you still need to sell? Because if it's just strictly a money grab guys and it's their primary residence. Now, if it was an investment property and they're just kind of trading around and stuff like that, it might be a different story, right? But if it's the house they live in, um, to uproot your whole family and move and do all that stuff to sell just to grab some money. Nine times out of 10, those sales, there's always issues with those sales. And Enrique, and I think it's a huge mind shift guys. I think as a real estate agent, we just hear someone that wants to sell, we get excited, right? We're just like, All right, let's find the listing agreement. But I think to separate yourselves from the next listing agent, you have to ask that question. You know, what is the next step for you? What is, what are you, what are you going to do after you sell? right? Is this, is this sale going to get you to that next place? And I think once you do that, you create a little bit of separation versus like, yeah, let, let's just sign the listing agreement, right? It's, let's understand why you're looking to move. It may not make sense for them to sell, right? And that's where you're going to have to step in and kind of guide them to that process. And I think that's an important step, especially because a lot of times I see people just, all right, let's just list your property. Let's just sell it versus what is the next move for you? Yeah. Mao, did you have a question, bro, or a comment? Uh, I just wanted to give a very quick example. Um, like my last listing, that's literally what happened. Um, they re they called on uh, on the for sale sign for the one down the street, and I answered it, and then they're like, I want to sell my house. I worked with Enrique before in the past, but it just didn't make sense then, but I think it makes sense now. Um, and I did the same thing, right? Rob taught me, you know, always ask, what's the next step? What's the next big move? What are you guys going to do after? So they gave me their plan, right? They wanted to sell it to buy something bigger, right? They were tired of the area. There was no parking. There was legitimate reasons why they wanted to move from there. Um, now the biggest thing was where are you going to go next? So we ended up figuring out where they're going to go next, um, like narrowing it down. And then we listed the property, got that in a contract, and then moved them to the next home. So, yep. That was kind of an example of, you know, that is a legitimate reason. And it was the same thing. You know, we want to sell now because the market is getting hotter. And if we stay longer and it cools down, we may not ever get to move, right? They already missed it once. So this was the only opportunity and we were able to make it happen. So, yeah. So, so that client, uh, because I know that client, like they outgrew that home. They wanted something better. They wanted something in a different area, mm -hmm. right? Like they wanted to legitimately, legitimately, make a, a move for their family um, and kind of change where they lived and all that stuff. So for that one, it did make sense, right? It, it was an opportunity because the market's hot. And then also the opportunity because they had a plan in place of where they're going to go and why they're going to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember, I, I, I remember hearing like some client that wanted to sell because the market was hot and they didn't want to lose any money if the market went down. So they wanted to sell and then they were going to put that money in the bank and then go rent a property. 
Because that happened they didn't, in a different way. It didn't make sense. <laughs> because if, yeah, because if, because if they moved out, um, if they didn't, if the market went down, like they didn't think the market was going to ever come back up like that, right? Like that didn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. I think Alfredo or someone took that listing. And then what happened is after Alfredo went to, he signed it, he went to go meet with them again, met with the clients again, they ended up canceling the listing. Yeah. Because when they went to go look at rental properties, their rent was going to be higher than what they were paying now. Right. So the mistake Alfredo made was, Oh, listing, boom, boom, got a sign. Right. And then after like, it didn't make sense. And it was just like, you wasted all that time and energy when those questions should have been asked in the first place. Um, okay. It's very, very fundamental guys, but I, I think it's also crucial because the rest of the stuff, like the how to do it and all that stuff is not that complicated, but the fundamentals are important, right? Because now you'll know what opportunities to look for and, and at least what frame of mind you got to approach these things. So you got to have a motivated seller with a legit reason, right? With a legit reason. And what you got to think from your standpoint is if I take this listing on, am I going to be able to sell the listing? Are they realistic on price? Is it realistic, right? So realistic uh, price and is the plan realistic? And can I sell this listing with confidence? Right, like that's the biggest thing. And sometimes you know, a lot of agents will take stuff on just because they see a listing opportunity and want the sale. But signing a listing agreement, guys, is just the beginning, right? We don't get paid just to sign a listing agreement. We get paid to sell the house, right? So always, always be the filter and ask yourself, am I going to waste my time with this listing? Or no, is this something that's it's realistic? It checks all the boxes. I know I can sell this. I know the price point is realistic. I know the client is realistic and um, it's something that's doable that I feel I have the capacity to, to do um, with the given market right now, right? Because remember, you're trading time for dollars, right? Like if you take on a listing that just wasn't realistic because you just saw a grab, a commission grab, you're gonna spend time going out there. You're gonna spend time walking the property. You're gonna waste the admin team's time. You're going to get escrow involved. You're going to get the inspector out there, the stager and all this stuff. And if you did all that and you finally got it on the market and you don't get the price that they want and the seller says, hey, eh, I want to cancel, right? I'm not getting the price that they want, that I want. But you already knew in your mind that the price wasn't there anyways. You just wasted a bunch of time and a bunch of money when that could have been spent somewhere else and you could have closed more deals in that time, right? Service other clients and not wasted that money. Right, because there are costs to listings, marketing costs, all that stuff. So never take on an unrealistic seller, an unrealistic plan. Um, like something Rob says, he says we're uh, we're here to sell houses, not to collect listings. And he tells you know when we're meeting with sellers, he tells them directly. Yeah. And and. Here's a good thing that I learned back in the day, like when I talked to sellers, is I try to sell against them selling the house. And I go like, and this is a, it's a little reverse psychology, right? I walk into the house, I walk the property, I look at it, I sit down, okay, hey, thanks for inviting me over. I'm just curious, like, this is a really nice house. Why the heck would you want to sell this thing? Why would you want to sell this house and move out of here? Right? And what happens is the conversation totally flips around and then they start selling me on why they need to sell the house, right? So I want you guys to use that, right? Why the heck would you want to sell this house? It's beautiful. It's in a great neighborhood. Why would you want to sell this? I wouldn't sell it. It works, Howdy. guys. It works. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, because uh, working with Rob, and, and he says this too, like, that's another way of solidifying how how realistic of a client do you actually have, right? And yeah. It helps a lot. It kind of weeds out the ones that aren't even uh, serious. Sorry, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. And I just got a listing appointment right now while we were doing this call, so I thought it was kind of funny. I picked up an op city lead and the lady needs to sell her house and buy a new one. <laughs> there you go. So good job, Lily. So, so now 
hopefully you're armed with some more ammunition now, like to ask the right questions, right? <laughs> you're going to ask some of these questions. Why they want to sell? Is it a motivated seller? Is the plan realistic? Does it make sense? Is this a home that we can sell, right? Even with the given changes in the market, is, is does everything make sense, right? Right. And I think when you approach it like that, and even when you're having the conversation of, hey, you know, let's meet, let's see if it even makes sense, right? It's almost like the, hey, I'm not saying I can sell your house. I'm not promising you anything. Let's meet and let's go over everything. Let's see if it makes sense. And I'll give you some advice and my recommendations where you're, you're approaching it as like a counselor or an advisor or a consultant. Yeah. I'm kind of curious, guys, to see who's texting Liliana right now to be that agent to help her with that listing. <laughs> kind of uh, it's in seaside so i don't know if anybody's willing to go up that far you got me lily <laughs> okay i got you blanca <laughs> <laughs> hey if it makes sense if it makes dollars if it's a good plan if it's a good price point like shit all day yeah. you can hang out at the beach after there you go there you go yes um guys we're coming up on time um remember like listing stuff like th this is like a multi multi uh training multi-zoom or whatever training like it's not going to happen in one day but at least what i want you guys to peel back is where the opportunities are at right where are the opportunities for listings before i go start something new or think of starting something new am i maximizing what i have in front of me right am i maximizing the opportunity that's already in front of me like I'm getting leads coming from buyers from Zillow and all that stuff. Am I asking every buyer, do they have a property they need to sell? Am I asking all my past clients for referrals, right? Am I staying in touch with my past clients? If we already know that, that the majority of listings come from referrals or a big, a big percentage of them, then we got to ask ourselves, are we staying in touch with our clients to make sure that they send me those referrals? All right. So, and then when I do talk to people, are they motivated? Is it realistic? Does it make sense? Am I asking the right questions? Am I taking off my commission, you know, hat, my commission breath and like just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's sell your house. Or am I just saying, Hey, okay, great. You know, calmly, collectively. Great. Hey, it's great. You want to sell your house. It's an exciting thing. Let's set a time to talk and meet and go over everything and see if it makes sense and kind of walk you through the process. And, and I'll give you my best advice. Right. Um, because the pushy, like trying to close people and all that stuff, like it doesn't work guys, it, it backfires on you, you know? So protect your time, know where the opportunities are at, maximize what you have in front of you um, and you'll start getting some opportunities coming in. Jay, what you got? Uh, yeah, just real quick, Enrique. I know like this was a great training just kind of showing where you can get listings at. Um, I, I know we had like a six or eight week training of you know the listing presentation and that strategy. If we can maybe put that in the chat for people just to reference where those videos are at um, so that if they want to take, if you guys want to take your own time to kind of go deeper into the presentation and how, and how some of this, one of the top agents was doing it at a high level, we have video training on that for you guys. So I don't know if, I don't know if it's in the Google Drive, Enrique, or, or where we have access to that. Yeah, it's all in the Slack. So what I'll do right now when we hang up is I'll put it in Slack and I'll, I'll point you guys back to the link. That training is geared more specific to the actual listing presentation, yeah. what you do when you show up, right? What we talked about today was before that, how to find the listing opportunities, how to get the leads and how to, you know, you know, figure out if you should go meet with this person, right? That's, that's, this is kind of the intro before that. So yeah, definitely that's like a six, six part series and it breaks down like in depth, like what you do on the presentation, what questions to ask, how to set up for your presentation, it's all of that stuff. So I'll put that in the, in the training. And um, some of you guys seen it already, but I would go back and watch it. Cause it's something where I personally went on hundreds and hundreds of listing presentations before I, uh, and I butchered a lot of them guys. I butchered a lot of them. I lost a lot of them. I wasted time in the beginning though. When I was trying to learn, I was just going on everything. I was going on everything. And then after a while I was like, okay, now I'm not going to go on everything. I'm not going to keep driving all over the place for unqualified people. Then I started qualifying and it became more quality versus quantity. But that was how I was able to really sharpen up my skills by just going out there and doing it. Yeah, Enrique, if you can do those two things, put where the videos are at. And then I know we have on our website, 
the uh, the listing presentation, correct? Correct. It's so, it kind of walks you through the process of what we do when we have listings. So I'll put both of those links, and those are two resources you're going to want to study. Good. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Uh, Thank you so okay. much. Just yeah. a request. Can we do like listing presentation scenarios like as a group? Yeah, for sure. Not, like, not right now, but like. Yeah, yeah, like a role play, like on another training. <laughs> yeah, like a, just kind of like the, the setting and how you said, like just the whole actual conversation of, you know, you and the sellers like face to face. That's something that I've been wanting to ask Rob. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. We'll set up another time and we'll, we'll do an actual role play or maybe we'll role play it here on Zoom and stuff. Good. All right. Thanks, we'll guys. Put that, on, put that on the list. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.